test. One, two, three. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here, aka Shags, with a, uh, another episode of A Shaggy Duck Life. Thank you guys for joining me on the show, following along my journal of working here in Enid, Oklahoma, for myself being an entrepreneur, doing all kinds of artsy and creative digital media type things here in the Great Plains of America. You guys uh, can hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com and you can go to the website uh, either, probably just go to curtistucker.com. You guys can, if you're listening to this uh, episode on the audio on one of your favorite podcasting apps, you can also watch the episode on YouTube at youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. You can check it out there. So I appreciate all you guys checking in. I'm not sure if I've got all the sound on this set, um, but hopefully I haven't started out too loud on the audio podcast. But I uh, just wanted to slip another episode in here. Still trying to figure all this out, trying to figure out what this podcast is going to be all about right now. It's just kind of me journaling what's going on. Uh, lots of stuff going on here at Shaggy Duck Studio, and I will give you guys updates on all that. But I had a uh, somebody contact me this last week, and they nobody's really brought this up in a while, and so I thought, well, I haven't really I haven't done a podcast episode. I have done a blog post on this, but I'm going to add this uh, podcast to that blog post at CurtisTucker.com, and what it is is somebody uh, has a copy of the 1989 ca calendar and they were wondering if I had a list of all of the 100 rock bands that are listed on the poster. And I don't, I haven't ever put out a public list of the 100 bands that are hidden in the poster, but I've been meaning to, and so hopefully this will be my motivation to dig up all those or, or just kind of go through the uh, poster. So just want to give you guys a little background on how all of that happened and uh, kind of add that to, like I said, the blog post uh, there. Please go to curtistucker.com and, and look for the post. Uh, it's under journal in that category and it's got photos. So if you haven't seen the 1989 cat calendar poster, you can go there and you can check it out. And then in the blog post itself, I actually have some enlarged because uh, most people aren't gonna have the poster. So I've got some areas, I've kind of chopped it up into different areas and I've blown up each section. So you can see now, even at that, there's probably gonna be some of the clues and stuff that you're still not going to be able to see, but uh, uh, one of these days maybe I'll figure out how to get, or I'll just even blow up the pictures even bigger. But a uh, little bit of background on how I won the uh, Rock 100 The Cat uh, calendar poster contest, not once, but twice. And so, um, so basically growing up in Oklahoma, uh, especially, you know, Oklahoma City and uh, Enid, the biggest rock station, basically probably the biggest rock station in all of Oklahoma is Rock 100 The Cat. And they kind of play the hard rock music and, and a lot of rock music, you know, like uh, they kind of get into Metallica and ACDC and Van Halen, you know, that, that type of music. And so, uh, so growing up in high school, you know, that was the big station that everybody listened to. And so um, all through high school, you know, we listened to it and they would have contests and, uh, you know, thing, you know, just things going on. But then they also had like a duo in the morning. And uh, I think at the time that I did the contest, it was Rick and Max. And so they were like the probably the most listened to uh, morning radio program also in the state. So, um, so, and I don't know exactly what year they started the cat calendar contest. And what it was, what it is, is each year the cat would put out a poster, and it was basically a calendar. But and so they'd have like you know all of twelve months somewhere on the poster. But then the artwork would be a big picture of their mascot this yellow cat 
and you know and then some design and so somewhere along the line somebody decided it would be cool to have a design contest and so so every year the posters look completely different because they had different artists that would win the contest and so I was pretty much totally unaware of this the whole time I had never pers well living in Enid I don't know that they sold the con the posters around Enid at all um, so I didn't really know much about the uh, cat calendar poster contest but uh, went off to uh, college at Tonkwa and uh, had my lost year at Stillwater and at the end of Stillwater I decided hey I'm gonna get serious about uh, art um, cartooning graphic design and all that so I'd asked you know where's the best place to uh, get a degree in graphic design in Oklahoma and everybody said Central State University which was in Edmond and uh, that's what it was called at the time now it's the University of Central Oklahoma and so uh, I transferred from OSU to uh, Central State and I was lucky enough to get to go two complete years at Central State never leaving the art building so I because of the three prior years I'd gotten all my science and English and humanities and just everything I'd gotten everything out of the way and so all I needed was my core art classes and so um, basically two full years of college were spent 100 percent in the art department there at Central State and I'm, I'm gonna call it Central State but um, unfortunately um, and this doesn't really have anything to do with anything but uh, back then so so we're talking um, 80 uh, beginning of 84 85 and then I graduated in May of 86 and so I uh, got out of there uh, in 1986 with a graphic advertising design degree but had never turned on a computer um, and so so it was it was still prior to uh, computers being the big thing um, Apple being the big thing uh, home computers uh, all these you know Photoshop and Corel draw and Illustrator all those programs you know they were I think they were just coming around and mostly big agencies and, and probably publications had them at the time, but uh, colleges just, just didn't have them. But anyway, so so being in college in Edmond, which is uh, an outskirt uh, city uh, of Oklahoma City, uh, you know, you get, you're more in tune with what's going on in the Oklahoma City area. And so the CAT, even when I was in college, the CAT was still the radio station to listen to. And... Um, so I had uh, some cartooning classes and a lot of graphic design classes and in one of my classes there was this guy that would come in and he was almost always dressed in black and his name I believe was Trey Avon or Avons, Avon or Avons and I believe he might have been in one of my night classes uh, older than everybody uh, you know he already was off and uh, was doing graphic design, had his own business, but for some reason there was some class, it could have been a cartooning class, I can't really remember, there was some class that he was taking, but come to find out, he was the original artist that had drawn the cat, the, the character that's uh, the, you know, the focal point of Rock 100, the cat, and it's this yellow cat with a red bow tie on, and again you can see and uh, blue suspenders you can see the cat if you go to curtistucker.com and, and check on that um, that blog post so it was kind of cool getting to meet him that he was the one that originally came up with the cat but then I think you know as time goes on they hired bigger agencies and then you know other people you know it, it's not a super complicated design other people can draw the cat. So, so anyway, so so met him. Uh, he was the original designer of the cat character, and then um, I believe it was my first year there. Uh, maybe it was my second year. So if I eighty six, it's probably my second year. Nah, boy, how did all that work out? So eighty nine. Hang on, I'm trying to think a year. So eighty nine would have been done in probably eighty eight. And then 88 would have been done in 87. Well, I don't know how all that worked out. But um, uh, so, and, and there was another guy 
in one of my classes that I knew, and he was a graphic designer and a cartoonist as well. I guess I didn't really realize, but I guess um, a lot of this cat calendar stuff happened after I graduated. It did. It, it happened after I graduated and got out of college. So I graduated in 86 and uh, got out and I started doing, uh, had some odd, different odd art jobs trying to find my place and, and doing, and I finally ended up at a place called Scrivener and I was working in the layout department basically laying out grocery ads, but it was the closest thing I could get to graphic design at the time, but that caused me, uh, and the whole time I, I, basically from the moment I was in high school, I started a, a side hustle, which was graphic design and cartooning and logos. So I still had that business going while I was working for Scrivener doing grocery ads. I was still doing graphic design and logos on the side, uh, unfortunately at that time without the internet. So, you know, it was just all word of mouth and not a whole lot of jobs, but, you know, just enough to keep me going. And um, so then I find, I hear that the cat and I don't know if they had suspended it for a while or not, but anyway, in 1988, I hear, and it was probably 87, uh, because the contest would, yeah, it had to be 87, because the contest would be the year before, because you have to have the calendars out, uh, you know, for the next year. So, so in 87, I hear on the radio that they're having a cat calendar contest. And so I thought it would be pretty cool to enter the contest and um, I had not seen right now so now I have a, a pretty big collection of a lot of the I don't have all of them but I have a lot of the cat calendars but I'd never seen one and so I didn't know exactly what the designs look like or what other people had done and all this so I came up with this idea uh, which is kind of funny today but basically uh, in one of my jobs, before I was in the in the uh, laying out the grocery ads, one of my had been a silk screener, and we used to silk screen cat stickers uh, for your car and stuff. And so on those stickers, we would have the face of the cat. And because I had that artwork, I basically took the face of the cat uh, and the red bow tie, and I. And I did it on like an eight and a half by 11. Uh, so, you know, I, I didn't know anything. I didn't, I was just gonna enter the contest. I didn't know how people entered. I didn't know what type of arc, or, you know, they didn't really give you any specifics. They just said enter. So uh, basically eight and a half by 11, I did all these cat heads all over the, the page. And basically each face I changed, you know, there might be one that had a cowboy hat and he was Western and then one was, you know, maybe had a uh, uh, sombrero on, and then one had a patch, you know, a pirate hat and a patch. And so basically what it would amount to angry apes, if you've seen the angry apes NFTs, they all kind of look the same. They're all based on the same design, but they're all slightly different. And so that, and so basically I did that in 1987, and I turned it in, and uh, I did not win, but one of the guys, the other guy, not the Trey Avon that had uh, originally drawn the cat, but another guy, the other guy in my class won the contest that year. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. I know the guy that won the contest. And so what he, so 1988 was a year for the Olympics. And what he had done was he had uh, made, I, I can't remember how many, four or six. He had, he had put the cat in different Olympic, uh, you know, poses and with, you know, different Olympic stuff around him and then made one big calendar out of that. And then somewhere, I think like in the middle, they put the months and they had the, the little Olympic sports things going around. So, so he won that. Um, and that really got me motivated because I thought, wow, you know, somebody I know won the 1988 so it was in 87, but it was for the 88 calendar. And I, um, I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So in 1988, they had another contest. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to enter again. This time I'm gonna you know, try to up my game and do something better. And so what I decided was I was gonna do a big piece of art 
the the size of so now I knew what size the poster was and so I did the art the size of the poster so you know it would be more impressive and you know with something that there were there there just wasn't as much uh, manipulation so I didn't think you know the artwork that I was going to do would would look good being blown up so I wanted to do it actual size and so so I I basically got a uh, a sheet of watercolor uh, paper and if uh, watercolor paper is just it's really heavy it's uh, made of layers and layers and layers of paper so it can it'll soak up the watercolor but um, it's really really thick you know you can't you can just you could probably roll it up but you probably wouldn't want to I mean but you can you can move it around and it doesn't bend or fold so uh, real heavy paper and so I decided I was going to do it on that and so the ideas that I have had was and I don't know exactly it's just you know sometimes ideas come to you and you don't know exactly where they come from but the idea that I had was um, I can't remember which came first I think the idea of the rock groups probably came first so remember back um, or even today there's some beer uh, Brown Derby beer or uh, was it Big Mouth Mickey? So there was some beer that when you pulled the top off it had these like and I can't remember what the name of them is uh, but it's it's uh, image clues to the name of something so you know it might be uh, well like Brown Derby um, you know, the, the second word would be would be a picture of a derby uh, that you'd wear on your head, and the first one, you know, I I can't think of. You know, it might be the color brown, but of course they didn't have color. But um, something. So basically, something like that. Just it's kind of one of those you have to figure out the word with the pictures. And so uh, one day it popped into my mind, Robert Plant, and I thought, oh wow, you know, I could do something like that. I could do. Uh, draw a plant, you know, in a pot with green leaves and a plant, and then on the pot it would say Bob. And so Bob Plant would be Robert Plant. So that would be a clue, you know, a visual clue to what the name of that band was. And I thought, oh, wow, well, we've got Rock 100 the Cat, so why don't I do 100 rock groups? You know, I had, I thought, okay, I'll have to think of 100 rock groups or rock stars that I can, you know, make a clue to. And so then I thought, okay, how am I going to make that look? Well, I had this, you know, this plant. And so I thought, so growing up, uh, my best friend and I, his dad would take us to Six Flags over Mid-America in St. Louis. And one of my favorite things to do was to get one of those Six Flags maps of the amuse amusement park that had you know, it would have the train track and the little places where to walk, but it had people and balloons floating and little buildings and the rides, and it was just real cartoony and real busy and had a whole bunch of stuff going on. And, God, I mean, when we were kids, I, you know, I would always save my Six Flags map and bring it back to Enid, and uh, it was just one of the coolest things. And so I thought, well, let me, my poster will look like a Six Flag cartoon map but instead of it being a map of, of a place, it's just going to be clues to 100 rock groups. And then, so I wanted to even step up my game a little more and not just do a poster design. I wanted to make a contest out of it. So I thought, well, what if, what if the cat holds a contest and they have everybody guess, you know, see who can come up with the hundred the list of 100 rock bands and whoever sends it in first wins you know 100 bucks or, or whatever and so to add to that what I did was I drew the cat in the middle of this busy scene and made him look like Sherlock Holmes and so he had on the Sherlock Holmes coat the Sherlock Holmes hat and then he had a, a spyglass or a magnifying glass up to his eye like he was looking, you know, at the clues. And so that original drawing is on the website on curtistucker.com and uh, you can see, you know, see him on there. So, so basically I 
sketched out all of the different clues and kind of started making my scene. And then I inked the entire drawing um, on the watercolor paper. And then once I had it black and white and inked in, because I worked at the uh, place that we um, laid out and printed, we actually printed the grocery ads. Uh, there was a huge uh, printing press in, in, a, in this big meat locker in this at Scrivener. But because of that, we had our own huge camera department. And I mean, you know, these ads were big, so the camera had to be big. So I was able to take my original black and white drawing in there and I, I took uh, pictures of it and printed out film. And, you know, this was back in the day where, you know, you actually had to put the film in the chemicals and, and make it develop. Um, so, uh, you know, whole different process way back then. And it doesn't seem like that was even that long ago. But anyway, so that's why I have uh, a really good, clean, clear copy of um, my design before I colored it. So to color it, uh, it was on watercolor paper, and I had been doing some watercolor paintings, uh, but all kind of cartoony and with, you know, inked, ink drawing before I would color it. But anyway, so, so I, um, I painted the entire design, so it's got all these 100 uh, clues in it, and I paint it, and then I masked off everything that was painted. Uh, crazy. And then I wanted to do something kind of wacky with uh, the ground. So, so it looks kind of like the ground is on this floating piece of land that looks like puzzle edges that go around. But So I wanted to kind of make it look like uh, a dirt whatever. Um, and so the way that I did that was I got uh, some different browns and reds and yellows um, on my watercolor palette and I got a paintbrush and I would just dip the, or not paintbrush, but a toothbrush. And I would dip the toothbrush in the paint and then I would flick. And all those little flicks would go all over the watercolor paper and it made it look like dirt and sand and the ground. But And then I had what they call frisket it for um, airbrush artists use it, but the frisket was blocking all of the clues and the characters, so you know it didn't get on there. But so once it dried, I peeled all that off, and then I had this really cool looking uh, background that was done with a toothbrush with all these flicks. And so so that was it. So I had the design full size. I take it over there and uh, I enter it into the contest. And at the time, the prize was. Uh, $500. And so I submit it and then, you know, I don't know, weeks or a couple months go by and then I get a, I get a phone call and it's a guy, one of the higher ups, maybe station manager at the cat. And, you know, he says, is this Curtis Tucker? And I said, yeah. And he goes, hey, I'm looking at your design here. And he, he goes, it's pretty cool. And I said, oh, thanks. And he goes, did you do this? And I said, yeah. He said, well, how did you think of this? And I kind of explained to him, you know, that I was a cartoonist and I like the old Six Flag uh, maps and I like those beer tops that had the clues and, and I just kind of combined the two. And I really, really got the impression that he just did not, and I, you know, I told him, here I'm a college student at Central State University, or no, by then I had graduated. Um, but, you know, I was working in a, a uh, uh, the grocery ad, you know, layout department. And I don't think he believed that I had done the design by myself. He, I think he was a little skeptical, but um, basically said, no, yeah, that was me. And so he said, well, I just want to tell you, you, we chose your design as the winner of uh, the, the calendar. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, how cool is that? So I was super duper thrilled, thought that was the coolest thing. And what they did was, once they would print these, they, they sold them at the Arby's uh, around Oklahoma City. I don't know if they sold them. I don't think they sold them in Enid or other towns. They may have, and I don't remember. But um, So they sold them uh, for $2 a piece in the Arby's. But anyway, so they, they picked me as the winner, and um, they announced it on the station, and I hear, you know, on the morning show, and they have me call in and uh, Rick and Max interview me and we kind of talk about the design. And then for, I don't know, a week or so, there were some mornings where they were trying to guess a lot of the band names and they'd get caught and I would hear them so I would call in. And so I was on 
the radio with them, you know, several times talking about the poster and stuff. And so then it came time. Um, so I did not add any of the calendar, any of the months or the, the actual cat logo, which, you know, they like the cat logo and then the year that it is. But I just, I didn't want to add all that because I didn't know how they wanted that to go. So I just did the design and figured they would figure out how to put all of the other stuff, you know, either above it or below it or around it. And they called me, well, they, they gave the artwork to um, their design agency that was going to add all that and then send it to the printer and get it printed. And they basically told that design studio, look, we don't want the cat that he drew in the middle of the design with the Sherlock Holmes stuff on because it hides the look of the cat, you know, you can't see his blue suspenders and, and we would rather have our iconic cat, you know, unclothed. So you guys are going to have to, you know, redo the cat and have him in the middle. And so they were like, uh, and so, you know, here they've got this original piece of artwork, watercolor and ink on watercolor paper. And we're at the point, hang on. <coughs> Sorry about that. We we're in the point of uh, graphic design where you can't just scan it into a computer and manipulate it on a computer because nobody had computers and nobody was using Photoshop and Illustrator and all that good stuff at that time. So, so they called me and said, "Hey, we got a problem. Um, we we've got your design. We love it, but." the radio station would rather us go with an original cat uh, in the middle. Well, no, not even in the middle. What they decided was they were going to put the cat, they were going to lower the cat below the design and then have the months um, six on each side of him. So my design would be at the top of the poster, the cat and the months would be pretty much at the bottom of the poster. And they said, so we need what we need from you is, can you redo the design without the cat in the middle? And, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, and I'd gotten my $500 for the original design, but, and they were like, you know, we can't pay you, but, you know, maybe we can get you some cat stickers and t-shirts and stuff like that, and which they never did, but that's okay. Uh, so I you know, because I had done the design, I didn't want anybody screwing it up. I said, well, I will redo, I'll redo the middle. Um, we'll figure out how to redo the middle and because I'm not going to do redo the whole thing. So what we did was we sat, I sat down and I found, I, I traced and I put a piece of tracing paper over the design and I traced a line all the way around the cat that was a continuous line that that touched another black line. So so it's basically like drawing a circle around the cat, but the lines of the circle were all different objects, the side of an object, all the way around. And so so then I took that outline on my tracing paper and I went and got another piece of watercolor paper and uh, transferred that shape onto a new piece of watercolor paper and then what I had to do was fill in the middle where the cat used to be and so like uh, there was like a, a mountain that um, you know I had to finish the bottom of the mountain and then and then I had to add more I had to move a lot of the clues into that area. They were, there was, I'm trying to look on the the original black and white, like um, talking heads are on there. I'm trying to think of where they were originally. I might've added, I can't, I'm gonna have to find out if I've actually got how many more than a hundred I have. Cause I don't even see the talking heads on here. And so basically I added the talking heads to the new version because I had to fill in space. So, so there and there's stuff in the middle. There's like a pumpkin, and the pumpkin really has nothing to do. Um, it was just I just put that in there because I had to fill space. And so oh, I added a guy reading a newspaper, and there was a lot of I added clues 
I'll have to, I'm gonna have to figure out. But anyway, so what I had to do was um, parts of objects that were covered by the original cat, I had to kind of, like if there was a guy but his arm was hidden, I had to draw his arm and, and make sure it, it went to the edge of the new outline that I did. So anyway, so I, I basically redrew the entire middle of the design and then inked it in and, uh, and then painted it. And then I thought, oh, poop. You know, I had done the background, the ground, with a freaking toothbrush with random, random browns and reds and yellows and and so um, so basically I had to you know I used frisket and covered up all the objects again and I had to kind of recreate the background again and actually I did pretty good I matched it where probably nobody looking at the poster would know the one thing I will tell you if you do have a cat uh, 89 cat calendar poster or you do see one if you look at the the ZZ top below the ZZ top and in the scorpion tail that's one area where you can really tell. Within the scorpion tail on the left is the new piece that I added, and then on the right side of the tail is the old, and you can tell one's lighter than the other, but it's so subtle that nobody could tell. So anyway, so I, um, I can't, I don't know how much, you know, it wasn't an easy task, but um, I had to do a completely new middle, and I'm thinking by having to do a completely new middle and add, because there's quite a few new groups, in that middle that weren't on there, um, I'm, there's got to be well over 100 um, rock groups. There could be, who knows, 110, 120. I'll have to, I will uh, try to come up with an official uh, number and then I'll get that out because of the, the lady that had contacted me. She's kind of wanting a list. So, so basically, um, real quick, um, I did that. They, they put, so they basically took the new artwork that I did, and I believe they probably just glued it right on top of my original, um, and then they sent that to the printer. The printer took the picture, and I guess they have to put it on something at that point. At the, in time, they had to do something that spun, and basically they said it would basically ruin the original artwork once they were done. You know, it wasn't something they scanned, it was something that spun. So anyway, the original was uh, destroyed uh, making the plates for the printing, I guess. And, uh, but anyway, uh, they added a dark green background added to the cat, the, uh, the calendar and everything. And uh, the, ca the, uh, the calendar came out and it was a hit. I believe they said it was the uh, best-selling calendar that they had ever had. Um, I was so excited to go to Arby's and buy copies of my own cat calendar. And so I bought a lot of copies. I think I've only got maybe, I don't know, maybe three or four left. Um, and the one that I have framed, it, it's faded over time. You can kind of tell that it's fading. I'm looking, I keep, if you're watching me on the YouTube, uh, I keep looking over at it uh, because it's big and I can see it a lot better than uh, some of the pictures on my iPad. But uh, so then, uh, so I won and uh, that was cool and everything, super cool. And then the next year, I thought, well, you know what, what the heck, I'm going to enter again. So the next year I entered and I did the cat in front of a brick wall. And I made the brick wall, you know, basically one brick at a time. You know, I painted each brick a little bit different to make it look like a real brick wall. And then I I had um, the cat or cat whatever year, cat um, 99, spray painted on the wall. And so that was my design. Well, uh, they contacted me and said that I had gotten third place and uh, that was a hundred bucks. So in 89, I won. In 1990, I got third place. The thing was the one that won in 1990 also had a brick wall and the cat spray painted in white on the brick wall. And so I, I was a little bit miffed that maybe they had taken um, a couple of designs and made, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, I don't know. But I, I actually even called them and I said, hey, you know, the design that you guys picked has a brick wall in the background with white cat spray painted on it. And when that was what my design had on it, did you guys combine 
you know, some designs to make the, you know, the winning design. And they assured me that, no, that was how the other guy had done it as well. So I uh, got over that. And then the next year, which would have been the 91 calendar, I entered again. And I thought, you know what? Um, there's a lot more names out there. And so I came up with another hundred uh, clues to rock group and band names. And it was just more, it was the same deal. It was kind of a, uh, you know, and I, I don't have a picture of it. I'll need to take a picture of it and get it on the blog. But uh, basically just a whole, you know, whole nother deal of a whole bunch of, uh, you know, clues to rock groups all in a big jumbled piece. And I did not put the cat uh, in the middle of it because I knew I'd probably have to pull it out. Um, probably not not as cool looking. Um, you know, the first one you do is, you know, it's just cool. But anyway, but I won. So I, so I won. I believe I'm probably the only two-time winner of the uh, cat calendar contest. And another weird thing is I believe uh, 91 was the last calendar they did, uh, unless they brought it back and I haven't paid attention. But uh, after 91, uh, they quit having the contest. And so, so I won the cat calendar contest in 1989 and 1991. And so, so just real quick, um, some examples. I know I'm gone uh, longer than uh, 30 minutes and I'll try to wrap it up here. But, um, you know, like I said, Robert Plant was basically a plant in a pot that said Bob. Uh, ZZ Top was pretty easy. It's an old wooden top that's spinning and it just has ZZ on it. There's a white snake crawling along. Well, that's a white snake. Uh, there's two scorpions crawling along. Those are the scorpions. You know, some of them are super, super easy and obvious. Uh, one of the hard ones that people uh, couldn't get was there's a fish bowl with two fish and their lips are meeting and that is KISS. Uh, so, and then there's like a, a, a map of the United States and in the middle of it there's the outline of a state and it's Kansas. And then there's the outline of another state with a dot which is Chicago and then really, really hard to see and I, I don't know if many people even see it, but uh, there, the outline of Massachusetts is really tiny and then there's a dot and that would be Boston. And so those three clues are three clues on, on just the map of the United States. Uh, above that, we've got uh, the queen, uh, a, a cartoon character, female that looks like a queen. And then there's a guy next to her that looks like a king. And he's got a button on that says BB. And so, so BB King, not, you know, not exactly a rock and roller, but, um, you know, I had to add in, you know, to get, uh, there are some rock names that I just couldn't come up with clues for. Now, some, you know, some, so there's one area where there, I think ELO is uh, in Morse code, and then there's one below it in Braille, and I, off the top of my head, it could be in excess. In, no, that would only be three. Um, there's a four letter name in Braille. Um, but anyway, you know, there's Red Rider, a guy, a cowboy in a red, uh, red outfit. So he's Red Rider, and he's on top of a zebra. Well, zebra is zebra. There's a a leopard with a ear thing up to his ear. Uh, that's a deaf leopard. There's a police officer. That's police. Uh, mountain rainbow. Uh, so anyway, so that so I will uh, put together my list of uh, the 100 rock bands. You guys get on curtistucker.com, find that blog post, check out the poster, uh, see which uh, names you can uh, find. If you're listening to this and you did happen to buy one of my posters back in the day, let me know if you how many names you ever found on there. And I have a feeling there's well over. I had yeah, it just dawned on me that I had to add quite a few um, clues there in the middle to fill in that space because I didn't really move it would have been hard to move because I would have had to redo more of the poster. So I couldn't really move anybody. I just had to add new clues in the middle. And so, uh, so I, there's got to be at least 110 um, bands on there. And so I will um, get all of those 
uh, listed and put them on the blog there. And uh, for the first time since 1989, it will be the first official list of the 100 rock bands. And uh, so anyway, and then and then maybe who knows if if I ever get free. To, so I'll try to scan in my 1991 calendar. Now that one, well, I, by looking at it, I could probably come up with a hundred. But uh, again, it's it's a whole second 100, and that was in 1991. Think of all the bands and band names that have uh, appeared since 1991. God, I could do a heck of a a calendar these days, but even if you look at the 1989, there's a pumpkin um, that's just kind of right there in the middle, and I just drew it to fill in space, and I have a feeling people probably think it's Smashing Pumpkins, but it's not smashed, so it, it is not Smashing Pumpkins. It just happens to be a random pumpkin that I just put in there to throw everybody off and uh, to uh, add another object. So anyway, you guys, don't forget, you guys can hit me up at shags at shaggyduck.com. Go to curtistucker.com and check out the blog post with all the pictures. Go to youtube.com slash curtistuckertv. I am waving at you. You guys can see my video there. And uh, appreciate you guys uh, greatly listening to the podcast, still trying to find my way. Give me some ideas, some things you guys would like to hear about. If you guys are doing a blog or a podcast, I would love to connect and listen to yours as well. And uh, so for now, I'm going to get out of here, and I will see you guys later. See ya!